Okay, so uh, what we will uh, try to look at in this and the next lecture is the so called uh, implicit function theorem. Okay. Now let me recall uh, what the implicit function theorem uh, is in the context of uh, real analysis okay. uh, as far as real variables are concerned this is something that you should have seen in, uh, in courses in real analysis. So the uh, so let me put the title as the implicit function theorem. So you know the uh, so let us look at the look at a very simple example. So uh, let me look at the case of the case of uh, uh, two real variables. This is something that you should have come across in a fir first or second course in analysis real analysis. So we take the plane R2 and let us look at some equation of the form uh, capital F of x comma y equal to 0. Uh, so this is uh, this is to be thought of as an implicit uh, relationship between x and y uh, because you are not able to write x as a function of y or y as a function of x uh, this is called an implicit relation if this can be equally equivalently written as x is equal to some function of y okay that means you have solved it explicitly for x and if you can write it of the form y is equal to a function of x then you have solved it explicitly for y okay. But if you are if in general you are given a relationship like this where one variable is not written as a function of the other variable explicitly this is called an implicit function. So the standard example is for example is, is, is x squared plus uh, 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 x squared plus y squared minus 1 equal to 0 which you know is the circle unit circle and uh, uh, so it is the unit circle centered at the origin alright. And what you should notice is that you know if you calculate uh, uh, so if you calculate uh, uh, so if I take the example f of x comma y is equal to x squared plus y squared minus 1 and if I calculate dou f by dou x of uh, then I will get if I partially differentiate this with respect to x I will get 2x okay and uh, if I partially differentiate it with respect to y I get 2y okay and uh, the set of points where the partial derivative with respect to x vanishes are the set of points where x equal to 0 okay and x equal to 0 corresponds to the y axis these are points on the y axis and of course I am looking at points on the curve also okay. So you know uh, so if you look at uh, if you look at uh, f equal to 0 and dou f by dou x equal to 0 if you look at this set of equations okay. So f equal to 0 means it is a point on the uh, curve defined by f of x comma y and it is also a point where the first partial derivative with respect to x vanishes okay. So this is this happens only uh, so this happens only at the point x comma y is equal to so you know if I want the first partial derivative to vanish then 2x must be 0 so x must be 0 and if x comma y is lying on the curve then it should satisfy this equation and if x is 0 it means that y is plus or minus 1 so you get this 0 plus or minus 1 okay. So you will get so namely you will get these points so it x equal to 0 y is equal to minus 1 and I will get this point which is x equal to 0 y equal to plus 1 okay and uh, so if you take all other points on the curve these are points for which the first partial derivative with respect to x does not vanish okay. So if you take a uh, curve uh, a circle minus these two points 0 plus or minus 1 uh, on, 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 on these points of the curve what happens is that the first partial derivative with respect to x does not vanish okay 
and at so what happens at these uh, so at every other point of the curve what happens is that you can solve for x as a function of y so if you give me any other point on the curve okay then uh, you know uh, uh, I can take the uh, if you give me a point x0 comma y0 on the curve okay then I can so I get the point y0 here okay and I can find a small neighbourhood of y0 okay where x can be written as a function of y0 and for that function this is the graph of the function in that neighbourhood. So you know if I take this this piece of the curve in this piece of the curve uh, 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 at uh, say at x0 comma y0 locally locally you can write x as a function of y okay uh, uh, locally you can solve so the point is so in this case you know uh, 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 I can solve for uh, this is locally at y0 okay x is a function of y uh, uh, in a neighbourhood of y0 so you see x0 comma y0 is a point on the curve that is a point which is different from these two points okay uh, so the first partial derivative with respect to x can the does not vanish and then locally at that point I can write the curve as a function of y okay and you know what this is uh, in this you can you can write the function uh, you can write it uh, you know what uh, you know the function that I am talking about you can write x as uh, positive square root of uh, x can be written as pot positive square root of uh, 1 minus y square okay that will give me this branch of the curve and of course if my point is here if my x0 comma y0 is here then I I will be able to write uh, uh, x as negative square root of uh, 1 minus y square okay so here on on this piece this is the graph of x equal to positive square root of 1 minus y square okay and this is the graph of uh, x equal to negative square root of 1 minus y square so what you see is that uh, uh, if you choose a point where the first partial derivative with respect to x does not vanish you can write x explicitly as a function of y and mind you when I write x equal to g of y uh, what it means is that uh, uh, f of g of y comma y is 0 because it is a it uh, x equal to g of y is actually a piece of the curve so x equal to g of y will satisfy the equation of the curve okay and and this x equal to g of y in this case if, if this is if, if, if it is a point in the first quadrant then x equal to g of y is so it is positive square root of 1 minus y square so this is your g of y okay and in this case it is it is negative square root of 1 minus y square okay and that is what you will get whether you take a point here or here you will always get positive square root of 1 minus y square you take a point here or here you will get always negative square root of 1 minus y square and these are the two branches of that curve actually okay depending on the point you have, you have chosen but the idea is that your what you see is that you get uniquely a function which solves your equation you get a unique function of course you get this branch if you start with a point here and you get this piece of the curve you start with the point here so the piece of the curve that you get depends on the point at which you are trying to solve the equation and that point has to have the property the first that the first partial derivative with respect to uh, x uh, does not vanish so the moral of the story is, the is that if the first partial derivative with respect to x I mean the, the partial derivative with respect to x does not vanish then you can solve for x okay and similarly you I can repeat the same thing with y also if I look at the equation f equal to 0 is equal to dou f by dou y if I look at this then this is true if and only if the point x comma y is well you know uh, I want dou f by dou y to be 0 uh, dou f by dou y is 2y so 2y is 0 which means y is 0 so the y coordinate is 0 and if y coordinate is 0 and I am on the curve then I will get x squared minus 1 equal to 0 that will give me x equal to plus or minus 1 so I will get plus or minus 1 comma 0 
so the situation is that I will get uh, let me draw another diagram uh, instead of cramming that diagram with too many more things so here is my uh, so I will get the points uh, plus or minus uh, so I will get these two points 1 comma 0 and minus 1 comma 0 so well and, and these are the points where, where the, the first partial derivative with respect to the variable y does not vanish and now you choose a point different from this uh, on on circle uh, minus uh, these two points plus or minus 1 comma 0 uh, uh, the first partial derivative with respect to y does not vanish okay because these are the two points where the first partial derivative with respect to y vanish vanished and we have removed them at uh, say uh, at you know if I take a point x0 comma y0 on uh, which is different from these two points see for example I could have taken a point x0 comma y0 here you can solve for y as a function of x okay uh, uh, y can be written as a function of x and that will be a solution of f of x comma f f of x comma y equal to 0 so you will get f of x comma f x is 0 in uh, a neighborhood of uh, x0 okay so what will happen is that you see here you project down to x0 and there is a small neighborhood of x0 you can find such that the uh, the graph of the curve uh, 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 in a neighborhood of x x0 will be given by an equation uh, you know what uh, it is going to be y is equal to positive square root of 1 minus x squared so this is your f of x okay and if I had chosen the point here if I had chosen the point x0 comma y0 uh, 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 of course if I had chosen any point on the upper uh, semicircle I will get this function if I had chosen a point on the lower semicircle uh, if I had chosen a point x0 comma y0 here in the lower semicircle then you know uh, for the corresponding x coordinate I will get a neighborhood such that the uh, equation the implicit function can be solved for y and it will be minus root of 1 minus x squared so it will be so here it is going to be here it is going to be y equal to negative square root of 1 minus x squared okay so the moral of the story is that uh, to sum up you have an implicit function in two uh, in two real variables you can solve that implicit function for uh, the variable x uh, for the variable x in a neighborhood of a point where the first partial derivative with respect to uh, x does not vanish okay and um, uh, that is here that is what I have written here if the first partial derivative with respect to x does not vanish I can solve for x as a function of y if the first partial derivative with respect to y does not vanish I can solve for y as a function of x and both will be explicit solutions of the implicit function uh, the implicit equation I started with okay so this is what the implicit function theorem in real analysis is and in fact this implicit function theorem um, uh, can be generalized to several variables instead of just taking a function of two real variables okay you can have a function of several variables and then the implicit function theorem for several variables will tell you that you can solve for a variable uh, as a function of the other variables provided the first partial derivative with respect to that variable does not vanish at a point on the on this on the on the locus where uh, this function is defined okay this is what uh, this is how it generalizes uh, there is a and it is not very difficult to prove uh, that theorem okay so uh, the case of two variables goes to extends to the case of several variables and this implicit function theorem is of lot of importance in uh, so the study of manifolds and study of Riemann surfaces and things like that it is a it is a very important theorem now what I want to say is that there is an implicit function theorem which is also uh, there in uh, for, for two complex variables okay and it is uh, again uh, it also extends to several complex variables and what I want to tell you is that this implicit function theorem uh, for two complex variables that I am going to talk about is also going to tell you the same thing it is it is the same statement except that instead of two real variables you are going to deal with two complex variables and it is going to say that whenever uh, uh, the first partial derivative the partial derivative with respect to a certain variable is not 0 then you can solve for that variable in terms of the other variable that is what it is going to tell you but the point with complex analysis is that because of Cauchy's, Cauchy's theory you get an explicit formula 
uh, uh, given by an integral which you do not get in the case of real function. So the advantage of complex analysis is that because of the existence of Cauchy theory you can write down the uh, you can write down the uh, is, uh, the local solution okay so that is what we are going to uh, see. So um, and um, there are I uh, uh, will try to see if I can exp give you applications of this one of the applications of the implicit theorem for example is the fact that uh, if you give me a, uh, an equation in two variables uh, uh, such that uh, 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 there is no uh, there is no singular point a singular point is a point where uh, is a point on the on the locus where all the partial derivatives vanish okay the see to be able to solve it as a function of one variable in terms of the other the partial derivative with respect to that variable should not vanish okay but if the partial derivative with every variable vanishes at a point then I am in bad shape I cannot conclude that I can solve the function for one variable in terms of the other variables okay because all that the implicit function, function theorem says is that if if the partial derivative with respect to a certain variable is not 0 then you can solve in a neighborhood of that point uh, for that variable you can solve for that variable in terms of the other variables okay. So obviously if all the partial derivatives are going to vanish then you cannot apply the implicit function theorem and the points on the locus where all the partial derivatives vanish at the same time they are called singular points okay and uh, the problem is that at singular points you cannot conclude whether you can solve uh, of course the uh, both kinds of cases occur there are there are cases where you have singular points and yet you can solve locally for one variable even though the first partial derivative vanishes as you can look at the curve for example y squared equal to x cube which is a cusp okay and uh, there are also curves for which at singular points you cannot solve locally okay. So uh, the so the uh, the main application to manifold theory is that whenever you have an equation which has no singular points for example the curve is uh, uh, this curve here is a circle and the circle has no singularities okay and one way of seeing it is that it has a unique tangent at every point okay and whenever you have a curve which has no singularities then the beautiful thing is that you can turn it into a manifold okay. So in this case the circle is a manifold one dimensional manifold if you had if I if I uh, if I had two complex variables then I can turn the locus into what is called a Riemann surface okay. So one of the most important uh, applications of the implicit function theorem is that you can for a curve uh, or for an equation which is non-singular which has no singular points you can turn the locus of that equation the set of points satisfied by that equation into a manifold and you can do calculus on it okay. So that is one of the most important applications of uh, the implicit function theorem that is why it is very very important for higher analysis okay. So let me go ahead with the complex version so what I am going to do uh, 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 complex uh, complex version so what I am going to do is I am going to take a function f from c2 to c uh, written as uh, z comma w going to capital F of z comma w okay here is my function and uh, of course you know uh, when I when when we talk about the implicit function theorem uh, the function that we are dealing with uh, has to have some uh, obviously good properties for example I, I want uh, at least that the function is uh, continuous in both variables and you know uh, its partial derivative with respect to each variable exists and the partial derivatives are also continuous these are obvious assumptions that one makes okay maybe some of these assumptions can be uh, relaxed a little but there is no harm in assuming that uh, the function that you are dealing with is at least continuous in both variables and the first partial derivatives are continuous. So what I am going to do is uh, at least in the in the complex case let me be very strict and tell you what the exact uh, conditions are I want f to f is continuous so uh, I should at this point give you a word of caution when I say f is continuous I mean f is continuous as a map okay and that means continuity with respect to both variables okay and I want you to understand that continuity with respect to both variables implies continuity with respect to each variable separately but continuity with respect to each variable separately is not as strong enough as continuity with respect to both variables. So this is so this is stronger than saying that for every z fixed f of z comma w is a continuous function of w and for every 
w fixed f of z comma w is a continuous function of z okay that means when i say that for example f of z comma w is a continuous function of w for every fixed z that means i am saying in the variable w separately f is a continuous function it is called separately continuous with respect to second variable similarly when i say f of z comma w is continuous with respect to z for a fixed w i am saying it the function f is separately continuous with respect to the first variable okay these are very very weak conditions when compared to this condition which is continuity in both variables okay so uh, i am just this is i what i am assume when i say f is continuous mind you it implies separate continuity it is implies continuity in each variable but it is far far stronger than that that's that's one thing that you can easily find functions which are you know continuous in uh, separately in each variable but put together in two variables they will not be continuous okay so i'm just trying to emphasize the point that uh, this is not this is stronger than continuity in each variable all right now so i assume this okay and then um then i also assume the following thing so here is here is what the uh, uh so so here is the implicit function theorem so let me let me just say simple form let me give you the simple form and then give you the more involved statement so what is the simple form the simple form is well uh uh if z not comma w not is a is a is a point uh uh of uh f of z comma w equal to 0 okay that means is a solution of this that is z not f of z not comma w not is 0 and if and number 1 if uh, uh, f is uh, analytic in z uh, for each fixed w okay so if you fix a w then this function becomes a function of z and with as a function of z for a fixed w it you assume it's analytic okay that means i can partially differentiate this with respect to the variable z because it's analytic with respect to z okay and the partial derivative of f with respect to the first variable okay so you see i'm i let me write it very carefully f i write f as a function of zeta eta i differentiate partially with respect to the first variable okay then i substitute z not comma w not suppose the so i'm just saying that the partial derivative with respect to the first variable is non zero at the point z not comma w not okay then you see uh, there exists a delta positive uh, uh so uh, uh, let let me not say that then i'll say then then the first variable f of z com comma w equal to 0 can be solved to give z is equal to g of w in a neighborhood of z not in a neighborhood of uh, uh, in a neighborhood of uh, w not okay so you see this is the uh, uh, uh so so th th of course this this implies that you know f of g w comma w comma w is 0 okay so it is the same statement literally what is a general statement the statement the general idea of the implicit function theorem is whenever you take a point on the locus the satisfied by the equation if whenever you the first partial derivative with respect to certain variable is not zero then you can solve explicitly for that variable in a neighborhood of the uh, of the point uh, corresponding to the other variables okay so here uh, z not comma w not is a point on this locus it is a point that satisfies f of z comma w is zero okay and 
the first partial derivative of f with respect to uh, uh, the first variable does not vanish at that point then I can solve for the first variable as a function of the second variable in a neighborhood of the second variable point corresponding to the given point. So, the second variable point is w naught. So, in a neighborhood of w naught I can solve okay. I can solve for z as a function of w in a neighborhood of w naught provided the first partial derivative with respect to z is not not vanishing. And to make sure that I can really differentiate this with respect to the first variable z with respect to the first variable uh, I need and I want to do it in a uh, uh, and I want to do it not just at that point I want to do it in a neighborhood of that point. So, I will have to assume that the function is analytic uh, in the first variable at least in a neighborhood of the uh, point z naught and that is what I have assumed here okay. I am assuming that if you freeze the second variable then as a function of the first variable it is analytic that allows me to uh, differentiate it with respect to the first variable okay. So, th so the so this is the first part of the statement then what is the second part of the statement the second part of the statement is uh, is the following the second part of the statement is well uh, uh, if uh, if uh, um, it tells you more it tells you that uh, uh, so you can ask uh, see this function uh, z equal to g of w is a function of w in a neighborhood of w naught okay you can ask when that is analytic after all that is also a function of a complex variable you can ask the question when that is analytic okay and uh, and of course then you can ask the question as to what is the derivative of that. So this gives uh, the, the remaining parts of the theorem gives you gives you answers to these questions okay. So uh, you know if so if uh, f of z comma w is an also analytic in w for every fixed z uh, for every fixed z okay which is a sim a com a condition similar to this one okay in in here we have assumed that the function f is analytic in the first variable uh, for every fixed value of the second variable okay uh, and now I am assuming the other way around I am assuming that the function is also analytic with respect to the second variable for every fixed value of the first variable then uh, g of w is analytic the g of w that I wrote that is the explicit solution z equal to g of w which is the explicit solution of f of z comma w in a neighborhood of w naught that g of w becomes analytic and what is the what is the uh, so if it is analytic you can ask me what is the derivative is there, is there a simple formula for the derivative and the answer is yes uh, and the derivative is given by the uh, by the following formula and moreover g dash of w okay which is which by this I mean d by d z of g of w sorry g by d d w of g of w is given by the following formula it is it is minus of you differentiate f partially with respect to the second variable and uh, you divide by the derivative of f with respect to the first variable and then evaluate this whole crazy thing at the point g of w comma w okay this is the derivative of uh, the analytic function g with respect to w right mind you the, the numerator I have the derivative negative of the derivative with respect to the with respect to the uh, second variable and the denominator I have the derivative uh, with respect to the first variable and I am taking the I am taking the quotient and then I am evaluating it at g w comma w that gives me a function of w and what is that function of w that function of w is the derivative of g of w with respect to w that is what the formula says okay and mind you uh, uh, we have already assumed that the deri derivative with respect to the first variable is not 0 in a neighborhood 
okay. So what will happen is in that neighborhood this will never uh, you will get you will get a suitable neighborhood where this never vanishes and that is that is what justifies dividing by this mind you do f by do zeta at uh, g w naught which is z naught comma w naught is non zero okay so it will it will it will work in a neighborhood of w naught okay so the, the denominator will not vanish so this division is uh, this division makes sense okay and um, so this is the formula for the derivative all right and uh, um, fine so what it so if i put these two together it tells me that if you give me a complex function of two variables then uh, if you want to look at the zero locus of that function of two variables then at a point on the zero locus of the function of two variables if the first partial derivative does not vanish for which i need the function with respect to the first variable to be analytic for every fixed value of the second variable then i can solve for the first variable in terms of the second variable as a function in a neighborhood of the, of the point corresponding to the second variable and further this solution which is the explicit solution this function is itself analytic and uh, uh, when does that happen that happens provided the function is also analytic as a function of the second variable for every fixed value of the first variable and in that case you have a formula for the derivative of this explicit function the explicit solution of the implicit equation and that is given by this ratio of derivatives negative ratio of derivatives that is what it says okay and uh, um, okay so this is the this is the kind of simple form okay now what is more what is a more involved form more involved statement the more involved statement is is the following uh, it it will tell you uh, it will tell you uh, 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 it will tell you what these neighborhoods are it will give you more information uh, choose uh, 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 rho greater than 0 such that uh, for 0 less than mod z minus z naught less than or equal to rho f of z comma w naught is not 0 okay such see such a such a row exists see f of z comma w is a is a uh, analytic function for uh, in z for every fixed w so you know you put w equal to w naught so f of z comma w naught is an analytic function of z and it has a zero at z naught because f of z z naught comma w naught is zero so z naught is a zero of this analytic function of z and you know the zeros of an analytic function are isolated uh, uh, and mind you this analytic function is not identically 0 why it is not identically 0 is because that because its first partial derivative is non zero in a neighborhood of z naught okay I mean it is not 0 at z naught and therefore it is not it cannot be 0 in a neighborhood of z naught alright. So it is certainly not the uh, it is not the it is not a constant function it is a non constant analytic function of z and you know a non constant analytic function. Uh, uh, has uh, iso has has zeros which are isolated. So the zero z naught of this function is isolated. So there is a small neighborhood. There is a deleted closed disk, uh, you know, centered at z naught of positive radius, on which there are no other zeros. So that's how you get this row. Okay, we have already seen this several times in earlier lectures. Okay, and then uh, there exists a delta greater than zero such that uh, such that in fact uh, g of w is given by 1 by 2 pi i integral over mod zeta minus z naught equal to rho the integral being taken with respect to the anti clockwise sense of zeta d uh, do f of zeta comma eta uh, zeta comma w by uh, do uh, zeta d zeta by f of zeta comma w okay so this is the formula uh, uh, for g uh, whenever w is at a distance of uh, is at is a is at a distance less than delta from w naught okay so this is uh, the more involved statement gives you a formula for the explicit uh, function g 
which is a function of uh, w okay so uh, so what this tells you is that that is for every w with mod w minus w not strictly less than delta there exists a unique z with mod z minus z not strictly less than rho such that uh, uh, z equal to g of w satis is a solution of f of z comma w equal to 0 that is f of g of w comma w is 0. So this also tell you tells you uh, note then note that g which is defined from set of all w such that mod w minus w not is less than delta to the set of all z such that mod z minus uh, mod z minus z not less than rho is a is a one one function it's an injective function it takes z it takes w to g w which is z there is exist there is a unique z okay so you get a unique solution z equal to g w for the implicit uh, for uh, the implicit function f of z comma w equal to 0 and uh, 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 I think I am more or less done that is right so so this is the extra information that you get uh, this is the extra information that you get uh, if you want the more involved statement okay this is the extra information that you get now uh, it is very uh, easy uh, to tell uh, to give you a corollary a very simple corollary a simple corollary of this is the inverse function theorem okay. So the corollary is is the inverse function theorem okay so what you do is put f of z comma w is equal to f of z minus w for uh, f analytic okay you put f of z comma w to be f of z minus w where f is an analytic function of z okay then f of z minus w for every fixed w f of z minus w is an analytic function of z and for every z fixed z f of z will become a constant and a constant minus w is certainly an analytic function of w with derivative minus 1. So what you will get is you will get you will get that uh, you will get the inverse function theorem so in particular you will get uh, that if uh, w0 equal to f of z0 uh, there exists delta greater than 0 such that uh, for uh, uh, mod w minus w0 less than delta you will have uh, g of w z equal to g of w will be given by 1 by 2 pi i integral over mod zeta minus z0 equal to rho and you know if I if I plug in here I will get zeta f dash of zeta t zeta by f zeta minus w which if you recall was the formula that we got for uh, 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 g is actually f inverse okay. So uh, this is the formula that we derived for the inverse function in the inverse function theorem and uh, we get this formula uh, and we get this uh, uh, you get a formula for the inverse function theorem uh, also as a corollary of the implicit function th theorem. So the implicit function theorem is always a more stronger uh, statement than the inverse function theorem okay uh, and, and, and therefore uh, the philosophy is that the, the fact that a injective analytic function is a biholomorphic map okay if a function is injective and analytic that it is a holomorphic isomorphism is actually uh, a corollary of the uh, uh, you know the uh, the implicit function theorem in some sense okay so the implicit function theorem is stronger than the inverse function theorem right so what I will do is in the next lecture I will try to explain how to uh, get the proof of the implicit function theorem okay I will stop here.